be it environmental, physical, scientific or medicinal, biologic will get to the heart of the matter. Coming up, transport policy makers and motor manufacturers are discussing how to encourage the use of cleaner fuels in vehicles on the roads. The 60 Tesla quasi-continuous magnet, the most powerful in the world, increases our understanding of basic scientific phenomenon and the properties of advanced materials crucial to science and technology. Complementary and alternative medicine are becoming more widely accepted by doctors as well as the public. A recent survey found that more than half of all primary care doctors had arranged some form of non-orthodox treatment for their patients. But what hard evidence is there that such treatments are effective and safe? One of the rarest wild birds in Britain, the bittern, has made its first recorded appearance in London for a century. And in a last ditch attempt to save the water vole, more than 200 are being released onto a suburban wetland reserve where it's hoped they'll go forth and multiply. Each vole has been fitted with a radio tracking collar so that it can be located and monitored. And British female inventors have been showing off their best ideas and the designs and creations are beginning to attract major interest from big companies. An electric-powered van belonging to London's Camden Council recharges its batteries. Local authorities here are at the forefront of efforts to trial alternative fuels, with both gas and electric-powered vehicles playing a part. Tougher European emission standards have acted as a catalyst towards progress, as well as advancing the technology that makes existing engines more efficient. At this conference, though, industry experts say vehicles powered by hydrogen fuel cells are the way forward. They have no tailpipe emission, are relatively quiet, effectively electric cars. However, an infrastructure, a fueling structure for those cars, is not yet in place. The costs involved are enormous. Billions of pounds are currently being poured into improving the power density of the fuel cells, which transform hydrogen and oxygen into electric power by a catalytic chemical reaction. The conference heard that refined hydrogen technology is still emerging, but that demonstration fleets could be in place by 2003. Clean technologies like hydrogen fuel cells seem likely to deliver real benefits. The Los Alamos National Laboratory has a powerful experimental tool that's attracting researchers from university, industry and other laboratories worldwide. The 60 Tesla quasi-continuous magnet, the most powerful in the world, increases our understanding of basic scientific phenomenon and the properties of advanced materials crucial to science and technology. The magnet is operated by the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. Many of the technologies we take for granted today from artificial light to the digital revolution to the images you see before you now have come about from the knowledge gained through the fundamental studies of magnetism and the use of magnetism as a tool, a probe, to investigate at the most basic levels the properties of matter. When energized, the 60 Tesla magnet creates a magnetic field over a million times stronger than the Earth's geomagnetic field, or a tenth of a second in a space of 32 millimeters, and can produce a variety of pulse shapes. The combination of field strength and volume makes this magnetic instrument unparalleled amongst scientific research magnets. The increased magnetic field allows measurements of many properties of materials, including specific heat, resistivity, magnetic energy states, electron spin, properties of magnetic semiconductors, 
crystal lattice structure and superconductivity. The list is long, the potential enormous. Now they're able to obtain more data in two seconds than they used to collect in two weeks. As well as learning about matter and its properties, they're able to learn about making better magnets so that the process can continue. The magnet consists of nine independent metal coils of heavy copper alloy nested together like a set of Russian dolls. The smallest coil has an inner diameter of 34 millimeters, while the largest has an outer diameter of 890 millimeters. Each coil is contained in a reinforced steel shell to contain the pressures produced by the field, pressures that can reach 100 tons per square inch. The nine coils are connected to independent circuits and are set in a liquid nitrogen for cooling. The doer is filled with liquid nitrogen to cool the elements of the magnet and then quickly drained before each pulse. The cooling prevents damage from resistance heating and the liquid nitrogen is drained to avoid possible explosive pressurization. Pulses can be repeated every hour. Los Alamos was chosen for the site of the 60 Tesla magnet because of its technical expertise and long tradition of basic science research. Also, Los Alamos has the infrastructure to support the effort, including a giant power source needed to drive the magnet. This source truly is colossal. A 622-ton synchronous motor generator with a rating of more than 1,000 megawatts salvaged from a cancelled nuclear power plant. A significant part of the construction effort was adapting this machine for pulsed operation. The motor generator is first employed as a motor. Taking power from a commercial electrical mains, the 212-ton rotor is slowly spun up to 1,800 revs per minute in about 20 minutes. When an electrical pulse is needed to drive the magnet, the machine becomes a generator, converting the enormous kinetic energy of the rotating shaft into hundreds of megawatts of raw electrical power. The electrical energy from the generator then flows through a 24 kilovolt bus bar system into a power conditioning cage where the power is transformed to a standard voltage control to produce the desired magnetic pulse shape and convert it from alternating current to direct current. This is accomplished with five large power conversion modules of transformers, silicon control rectifiers, cooling systems and control switches. These modules are rated at 64 megawatts each and are the largest in the world. For about two seconds, a pulse of electrical energy flows from the generator through the conditioning array into the magnet. About 30% of the 90 megajoules delivered to the magnet is recovered and returned to the motor generator by operating the power conditioners in reverse. This electrical energy is converted back into the kinetic energy of the rotating shaft, available for the next pulse. Interactions of this energy flowing through the system components produces unique sounds. The motor generator. The power conditioners. The magnet. It's late afternoon on a typical experimental day. Experiments are carried out after hours in order to put less strain on the commercial grid. The experimentalists have readied their experiment and are preparing to load the magnet. Generally, samples are quite small, but the fixturing needed to place them in the magnet bore are long and cumbersome. Connections are fragile and care is taken. There is close coordination between the experimentalists and the power technicians. A full-time cadre of Los Alamos technical experts is on hand to assist and facilitate each experiment. Safety is an integral part of all operations. While the experimentalists are busy at the magnet, the power generation team prepares the power source.
motor generator walk-arounds ensure the status of bearing oil levels in circulation, cooling water levels in circulation, lighting and power subsystems. Battery backup is available in case of commercial grid failure. Batteries would continue to supply power to critical control systems and pumps. Although the motor generator is a behemoth of a machine, it can be delicate when it comes to its operational needs. Current monitoring equipment in the power conditioning room is checked. Visual checks are made of switchgear and interlocks. Overall experimental control is handled at the generator control room. Radio contact is maintained. This data is from a recent optics experiment conducted in the 60 Tesla field. Laser fluorescent photons are collected from the experimental material like state-of-the-art charge coupled devices or CCDs. Spectra are taken every millisecond for a total of 5 megabytes of data. The mission of the High Magnetic Field Laboratory is to be the world's premier centre for developing ultra-high magnetic fields. Then to make the facility available to researchers in the field of physics, chemistry, material science, engineering, biology and geology. At stake is the integrity of advanced science education and training and the ability to compete on the world stage in science and technology. London's Wetland Centre. Two years ago this was a disused reservoir by the Thames. Today it's the largest urban wetland centre in Europe. Among the many birds that nest and breed among the reed beds, staff were recently surprised to find three bitterns. Bitterns, a member of the heron family, are very elusive. They look like a heron in their shape, but they're a bit smaller. And the best way to describe their colour is that they are exactly the colour of reeds. And this is so that they can camouflage themselves while they wait for the food they're looking for, like fish and amphibians and insects. The bittern makes its home in reed beds and is famous for its unique booming call. Experts think the birds may have flown over from the European mainland to escape the winter weather. There's thought to be only about 30 pairs in the whole of Great Britain. They need reeds to live and breed. Many reed beds have been destroyed in the last couple of centuries, so their habitat is fast diminishing. The return of the bitterns shows that it's possible to attract back traditional wildlife. And that's what the hope is for this next little fellow. The mammal made famous by the character Ratty in Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows is in danger of becoming extinct in Britain. The Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust Reserve has become a nursery for the repopulation of the water vole. The tiny mammal, once numbered in the hundreds of millions across the UK, has been reduced to less than a million. Conservationists are slowly releasing about a hundred of the furry creatures on the wetland in what is the largest reintroduction ever attempted with the species. The American mink, introduced for fur farming early last century, is the culprit behind the vole's demise. The mink is very different to the number of predators the water voles had to face in the past, simply because it can actually enter their bank holes and effectively the water vole therefore has nowhere to run. Each vole has been fitted with a radio tracking collar so that it can be located and monitored. 
conservationists are encouraging landowners to trap mink in certain river catchments throughout the country in an effort to improve wetlands so that there's a chance that water voles could survive even if there are mink around. There are areas where the vole and the mink coexist. As they learn more about how nature has allowed the two to cohabit, scientists believe that this threatened species may stand a better chance of survival. This gathering was for the British Female Inventor of the Year Awards 2002. Competition was especially varied with entries ranging from a non-toxic paint stripper to a device used to detect wrecks on the seabed. The non-toxic paint stripper was invented by chemist Ithiel Mogridge, who chose to develop a safe, non-toxic, biodegradable product because she was horrified at the toxicity of other products. The Innovator Category Award was won by Barbara Sexton for her internally lit computer keyboard. The key to turning a good idea into a successful business is in protecting the concept. Congratulations ladies, your scientific thinking has improved lifestyles around the world. And this year's Prince Philip Designers Prize has been awarded to the man responsible for some of the best known consumer products of modern times. Kenneth Grange gave the world the Kenwood Chef food mixer and Kodak's Instamatic Camera, among other classics. The Instamatic Camera is one of the best known designs. Some 40 million have been sold around the world. In a career spanning five decades, Kenneth Grange has produced some of the most familiar objects in our everyday lives. He says he had the good luck to start at the right time. The business of invention can be lucrative, but not automatically. You need to protect your ideas by patent, get the backing, and then go forwards with a good marketing plan. In Britain, five million people suffering from bad backs, stiff necks or sore legs seek the help of an osteopath every year. 40,000 of them come here to the British School of Osteopathy, the oldest training college for osteopaths in the country. The common image of the osteopath is a kind of glorified physiotherapist who specializes in clicking joints to free them up. But the first session at the osteopath is like going to the doctor. A careful history is taken and then a full physical examination. But while doctors look for disease, osteopaths are interested in the body's function. If people function properly, they'll cope with whatever they have, get better and have less symptoms, according to Charles Hunt at the British School of Osteopathy. No pain, no blood. No, and no increase in frequency. Okay. In 1993, osteopathy was recognized by law in Britain. A professional body was set up to control training and registration. Students at the six training colleges in Britain take a four-year full-time course covering all the medical subjects of a conventional medical degree. They don't study pharmacology as they're not allowed to prescribe drugs but they're in the first line of referral and need to be able to recognize the warning signs of cancer and other serious diseases not curable by manipulation. Osteopaths regard the body as a whole unit, so the nerves, muscles and joints they work on are influenced by and can influence the internal organs. A mixture of specific massage and carefully targeted downward thrusts on joints are used to free up the joints in the spine promoting blood flow and healing. This is the familiar work of the osteopath. But at this school, it's being extended far beyond just sore backs and joints. 
only osteopathy and chiropractic. A similar method of manipulating joints that deals only with the back have state registration in the UK. Training to qualify costs £24,000 in fees alone. The approach is structural and scientific. There's a lot of anatomy and physiology involved in the studies so as to understand what is the basis of the treatment. Since its official recognition, demand for osteopathy has been increasing steadily in Britain. Here, a student osteopath is examining the range of movement in the spine. Skeptics point to a lack of published studies to show its effect compared with physiotherapy or chiropractic. But with the first PhD study in osteopathy just underway at this school, the situation may be changing. The Royal London Homeopathic Hospital is a state-run hospital that offers a variety of complementary therapies for a variety of conditions, including bone and joint problems, skin conditions, allergies and mood disorders. The hospital is seeing an annual increase of about 15% in the number of patients referred by their doctors for homeopathy. But unlike osteopathy, homeopaths in Britain are not registered. This means that unlike the staff at this hospital, not all who call themselves homeopaths have necessarily had the proper training. The hospital runs research programs into a number of complementary therapies. This lady has been coming to the Muscular Skeletal Clinic for acupuncture for more than a decade. It's not a cure for her osteoarthritis, but it does give long-term pain relief. The scientific basis for homeopathy and other complementary therapies is still unclear, but more and more doctors are realizing how useful they can be, even if they can't explain exactly how they work. basic scientific phenomenon and the properties of advanced materials crucial to science and technology. The magnet is operated by the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. Many of the technologies we take for granted today from artificial light to the digital revolution to the images you see before you now have come about from the knowledge gained through the fundamental studies of magnetism and the use of magnetism as a tool, a probe, to investigate at the most basic levels the properties of matter. When energized, the 60 Tesla magnet creates a magnetic field over a million times stronger than the Earth's geomagnetic field, or a tenth of a second in a space of 32 millimeters and can produce a variety of pulse shapes. Medicine are becoming more widely accepted by doctors as well as the public. A recent survey found that more than half of all primary care doctors had arranged some form of non-orthodox treatment for their patients. But what hard evidence is there that such treatments are effective and safe? One of the rarest wild birds in Britain, the bittern, has made its first recorded appearance in London for a century. And in a last-ditch attempt to save the water vole, more than 200 are being released onto a suburban wetland reserve where it's hoped they'll go forth and multiply. Each vole has been fitted with a radio tracking collar so that it can be located and monitored. And British female inventors have been showing off their best ideas 
and the designs and creations are beginning to attract major interest from big companies. Be it environmental, physical, scientific or medicinal, biologic will get to the heart of the matter. Coming up, transport policy makers and motor manufacturers are discussing how to encourage the use of cleaner fuels and vehicles on the roads. The 60 Tesla quasi-continuous magnet, the most powerful in the world, increases our understanding of basic scientific phenomenon and the properties of advanced materials crucial to science and technology. Complementary and alternative mounds are currently being poured into improving the power density of the fuel cells, which transform hydrogen and oxygen into electric power by a catalytic chemical reaction. The conference heard that refined hydrogen technology is still emerging, but that demonstration fleets could be in place by 2003. Clean technologies like hydrogen fuel cells seem likely to deliver real benefits. The Los Alamos National Laboratory has a powerful experimental tool that's attracting researchers from university, industry and other laboratories worldwide. The 60 Tesla quasi-continuous magnet, the most powerful in the world, increases our understanding of base... An electric-powered van belonging to London's Camden Council recharges its batteries. Local authorities here are at the forefront of efforts to trial alternative fuels, with both gas and electric powered vehicles playing a part. Tougher European emission standards have acted as a catalyst towards progress, as well as advancing the technology that makes existing engines more efficient. At this conference though, industry experts say vehicles powered by hydrogen fuel cells are the way forward. They have no tailpipe emission, are relatively quiet, effectively electric cars. However, an infrastructure, a fueling structure for those cars, is not yet in place. The costs involved are enormous. Billions of 